made a mistake. I was working uh, with Sarah on a video and paying attention to what we were doing with that. And I had these little uh, spacers here that we used for uh, drilling the holes to put the uh, mounts into. And uh, I accidentally, well, I left to go get some additional tools and then I came back and uh, turns out um, I had drilling, I just started drilling holes where I had this thing set for the video, which was through the top skin. And this doesn't go in the top skin. This goes underneath into the uh, trailing edge of the wing, not into the skin, which covers the fuel tank. So, uh, what we should do is just make another one, or what I should do. Uh, but we don't have any more O2O material. Uh, we have some 025, which I guess I could use in an emergency, but it doesn't fit in our shear, and I'm not as good as a hand, with a hand shear that uh, Steve is. Uh, I'd have to use a stomp shear to get the straight lines like he does. He's a, he's a tin guy. So we're going to try and weld uh, some 020 aluminum, which isn't a whole lot thicker than a piece of paper, maybe a couple pieces of paper thick, and fill in holes in that material. So, yeah. Don't try this at home. I wish Steve was here because he doesn't make mistakes like this. Ever. Yeah. Here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're going to clamp this to some base material of aluminum to become a heat sink when we're welding things that thin. So we're gonna swing this out to the outside. And again, I have no idea if this is gonna work. And bring this in here. I don't know if I said don't try this at home yet, but don't. Alrighty. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut uh, some pieces of aluminum that are not much thicker than the aluminum itself, but I'm not going to touch them. Actually, let's clean that with alcohol first. You may have just pulled a piece of aluminum out of a uh, uh, the container, these enclosed containers in plastic that they're in. But even with that, you see there's still dirt and contaminants on it. And then I'm going to clean that and I got to remember to only fill in the outside two holes, not the middle. So hopefully I don't screw this up. Alrighty, then we'll remove a little bit of the oxide layer. Heat it again with the alcohol. Don't touch the wire with your fingers. Cliff off a little bit thicker than you need or you think you need. Take that piece, insert it down in the hole. And now what you can't do, like uh, if you're not comfortable welding aluminum, typically what you do is you sit there and you wait and you start going slow and all that. You cannot do that in this particular case because thin aluminum will just uh, uh, warp on you. So that piece is gonna be too thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two smaller ones that can actually fall down inside that hole. A little one and another little one. Grab those, drop those in there like nuggets. And see, super easy. All right. Now these things are so light that the gas from the welder will blow that away. If I just light up the arc, the gas will blow it away because it, it normally does a purge into the line. So I'm set at 81 amps right now, uh, AC, no pulse, and who cares about all this other stuff. Now, although I'm probably not gonna use this filler wire right away, I'm gonna keep it there in case I need it, and I'm gonna try and melt these two little guys. So turn it away, get gas rolling, bring it in, And the hole got bigger. Isn't that awesome? Okay. 
keep that cooling. Now we welded it perfect, but because I had to do it twice, what happened was uh, it warped a little bit on the bottom side. So what I'm going to do is uh, maybe put that in the brake and try and straighten it out a little bit with that and then a little bit of maybe shrinking um, with a shrinker that I'll bring in tomorrow. And uh, let's go for the next one over here and see if we can do that. Let me try this big one one more time. Yeah, this needs to be cool to the touch. Ooh, it doesn't want to be there in its home. Well, it was fine until I added a little bit more pedal, and then it uh, did what the last one did and created a bigger hole. So we put the cooler off and fill that one in. I know that I'm in here too long already. So I'm expecting a warp on that. And I can touch it. It's so thin that it cools off instantly. That and aluminum being a superconductor. So now what we'll do is we'll try and uh, see with the shrinker if I can fix all that. And what we're going to do is uh, file that all back down and try and redo it. Now does Steve know about this yet? No. I got to fix it first and then I can tell him about it. So wish me luck. All right, here we are on the last one. If you can see that or not. There we go. I know it gets a little white. We don't have the welding lenses on this guy. All right. Whoop. So as you can see, it warps pretty bad. Pretty ugly as sin, but it's going to be my job to make it look pretty like baby Jesus. So, we'll see how that goes. Good luck. Hmm? So, I don't have uh, proper hammers and dollies and shrinkers and stretchers here right now. i give you an idea how warped it is right now. So, what I'm going to do is try and take some of that warping out. And uh, anybody at home should probably just use body filler, but I'm trying to hide something. And that gets it about 90% there. Oops. And uh, what that'll do is allow me to file off the uh, weld beads, which will then loosen the metal a little bit and allow it to move a little bit more. So we'll just keep doing that all the way down the whole way. So filing was taking forever, so I'm going to use a four and a half inch angle grinder, a little uh, DeWalt flap disc sander and see if I can just take the tops off of the uh, weld beads and then come back with a vibrating sander and see where we're at and then see if I have to shrink or stretch any of this material to get it flat again. So. Something else I gotta do is take a look at the other side and see what the weld beads have done to that. I haven't done that as of yet because there will be beads underneath the bottoms and those will cause uh, problems of getting it straight as well. So I'll take a minute and take those out. Like, uh, it's pretty good. That pretty much most, most of the top, uh, bottom beads out. 
So now we're gonna use the old trusty vibrating sander. When I say old trusty, I've never used it before because I've never had to. So, first time. All right. Doesn't sound too bad. Well, that wasn't so bad. Maybe I'll use it again. Want these to be perfect. Like I said, I'm trying to hide it. I'll keep working. Alrighty, let's take a look. I'd say it's 97% perfect, so uh, that's what we call a miracle. Probably don't want to do it that way. But it worked this time because I had to. Now I can call Steve and tell him I screwed up. Oh boy. Can you call him? I don't want to call him. You got it. Come you call on. him. I'm filming. I'm, I'm working. <laughs> you tell him. <laughs> You're so much better at it though. He won't yell at you. <sighs> oh yeah, he will. <laughs> really? <sighs> Maybe he's not there. Yeah, that's cool. He's busy. Yeah, he's too busy. Oh. Yes! <laughs>